All right. Well, I want to thank all of you again for letting me, for giving me uh, a few minutes. Yay. And uh, and I and I appreciate Richard uh, uh, setting up the camera for this. Now I know it's UFO day, so I'll try to work in UFO somehow. But but really, what got me going on this particular topic was was the fact that gun control legislation was being pushed pushed through and not that I'm one who owns a gun and I've never owned a gun, never thought of owning a gun really, but I always thought that when citizens own guns it keeps governments in check. And whenever there's a mass shooting, people get all all harried up thanks to the media partially that uh, something has to be done. And I don't know, should, should we tell them to not cut the lawn now? <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> so we say, oh, something's got to be done. So they say, we should, you know, you get people who say, we should take away all guns. Now, at the very most, mass shootings happen, might take, kill about 100 people a year in the U.S. Now, yes, people die from handgun, handguns, you know, in the thousands, but as far as deaths from mass killings, which is what people react to, it's 100 people or less. So, they want to take away all guns to keep that from happening. You know, they say, oh, think of the children, think of the children. Well, in countries where no citizen has a gun, then the governments can kill millions of people at once. You can think of like Nazi Germany, when they killed like millions of people, and before before Hitler, Hitler even came to power, they re they passed laws that made people register all guns. So when Hitler came to power, being the megalomaniac that he was, it was easy for him to disarm all his all his all of his political enemies, and and then um, you know th then blame people like the Jewish people and and. Uh, and, and others, and then he could kill millions of people because he knew where all the guns were. I wrote a letter to the editor saying we shouldn't do that, and someone said, oh no, there's plenty of, of examples in countries that have passed gun control, and they didn't do any mass killings. And that sounds all good and proper, but, like, let's just suppose government kills a million people and I'll compare that to compare that to a hundred you know that's way more so <clears throat> even, even if it doesn't usually happen like for, for it to become a good policy for a country to take all guns away the government would have to not kill mil millions of people for 10,000 years you're trusting that the government's gonna be a legitimate good government for 10,000 years and then it's a good policy, maybe, at least on balance. But that's not a risk I want to take. So I wrote, so when they said that response, like, oh, no, you know, we should give it a shot. I was like, forget it, you know. I just can't argue gun control. But there is something that we can argue, and that is something that probably most people don't have any, don't have anything against, and I'm hitting my tray. So the second audio is going to have a lot of banging and like, it's like someone's trying to break down the door or something. But we um, can knock those out. With yeah. a gun. <laughs> but but that's, that's using prayer. Now, there's been lots of experiments where people have, have prayed and decreased violent crime. Talking about homicide, rape, and assault. Those are the three crimes that, I mean, three statistics that police can easily track.
Now, it doesn't work so well for robberies, because that may not be violent, but for the violent crimes it works. And the most popular study, you may have heard of it, was in Washington, D.C. in 1993. People from the Transcendental Meditation Practice, um, they, they prayed for nonviolence, and they had done this in previous cities. And in 1993, they did it for eight weeks. In the first week, there were about 500 people. Now, imagine Washington, D.C. at this point has a population of 595,000 people. And with 500 people, transcendental meditators, meditating, it brought down crime a certain amount. I forgot how much. And then by the eighth week, there were 4,000 people, 4,000 in a city of over half a million, and it brought down the crime by about 23%. And it was still dropping. And they predict that if they had stayed, at, if those 4,000 people had stayed in the city until it allowed crime rates to drop further, it would have dropped by 48%. Uh -huh. hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, uh. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. 